So today, folks, I want to share with you my cashew nut roast recipe. Blimey, I wonder how many of these I've made over the years. I must be making it about now 30 years. Ooh, that's given my age away, but it's a lovely recipe, this one. Um, I usually make it for vegans and vegetarians when I'm doing a dinner party. And the interesting thing is the amount of meat eaters that get delved into this and go, oh, that's just too good. Will you make me one? So to all of you who say that to me out there, you can start making your own because here's the recipe. But yeah, it's a really, really good one. So super tasty. Uses up leftovers as well. There's a lot of leftovers in this, so that's really good. Um, the other thing is it's really, really tasty to have either, you know, I like it warm out the oven with a jacket potato and salad. I also like it the following day cold with salad. And I also like it the following day when I can slice it and fry it and have it again with something like salad and jacket potatoes and things like that. It is so good. Also good if you're wanting to follow a more healthy regime. Maybe you are joining in veganuary, being a vegan, or maybe you are just looking for, you know, to reduce your meat intake a bit. Anyway, let's crack on with this recipe. I'm going to go over with the overhead now because it will make it a lot easier for you guys to see. So first things first, you want to get a frying pan and you want to pop in around about a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Then you're going to add in 100 grams of chopped mushrooms along with a whole chopped onion. So stick that all in there, bring it up to heat, just stirring round. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lower the heat and just let it sauté and soften. This is basically so that the onions then go translucent and not too browned. So whilst your onions are sautéing there, just get a loaf tin ready and pop a liner in it or line it out and make sure that your oven is already preheated to 180 degrees centigrade. It's going to move that to one side at the moment. Now in here I have got some lovely wholemeal breadcrumbs. This is really good for using up those ends of bread. I would strongly suggest that you use wholemeal and all you literally do is just take a food processor and blitz them up into these breadcrumbs but wholemeal works a lot better because it soaks all the liquid up. Then you'll see here I've done the same. I've blitzed up 250 grams of cashew nuts just so that they're like a gritty like texture. Then take that bowl, add those in and then to it we are going to be adding one tablespoon of mixed herbs. Pop that in like so and then we're just going to mix those ingredients round just so that it's combined. Now, the next bit is to deal with the liquid. In here, you will see I have got Marmite. Yes, a tablespoon of it. Love it or loathe it, it is absolutely fantastic in this dish. Then, in that pot, we are going to add 250 mils of liquid. which is just boiled kettle water and we're going to add in a stock cube, a vegetable stock cube. Now there's a reason why I've put that marmite in there and that's to melt it down. So all you're going to do is let the boiling water from the kettle just melt that down and also it helps to get the stock in. Now you shouldn't need any salt and pepper with this whatsoever. It should have plenty of flavour in it. If you use a good stock cube, there's no problem. Then that's melted down now and my onions and mushrooms are almost ready. So I'm just going to take the bowl and I'm just going to add the liquid first. I'm just going to give that a mix round. You see it's just firmed up now. And then we're going to add in the mushrooms and onions. And again, 
just work that and mix it round. Now then, next part, loaf tin. There we go. And you're just going to pop this in. Now just level that down. And then what you're going to do is pop some tin foil over the top. So we've popped some foil on the top and we're going to cook it in the oven now for half an hour with the foil on. And then for the last 10 minutes, you're going to take the foil off and that will leave it lovely and golden brown. Now, if you can hear any footsteps, I do apologise. That's my little dog, Max. Uh, you can't have this puppet. It's got onions in its little face. Yeah, even the dog is sniffing this out and thinking that smells just a bit good. Anyway, half an hour plus an extra 10 minutes with the foil off. Nearly time to take the cashew nut roast out of the oven, but I would just like to thank all my subscribers. Plus, if you would like to subscribe, just hit the bell button. And then every time I produce a new recipe, you get it. But more importantly, if you love or like the idea of making this recipe, then you'll know where to find it. Now, once your cashew nut roast is cooked and come out of the oven, just leave it for around about 10 minutes. This allows it to firm up and then it makes slicing into it an awful lot easier. But I hope that you are gonna enjoy this recipe for probably more or as much as I have made it over these last 30 years. God blimey, where does time go? <laughs> the full written recipe is on my website, cookingwithemily.co.uk.